Welcome back to this part of our YouTube searcher app. So we're gonna now build out the UI on the home page a little bit more. We focused our attention in the previous video of this particular section here and making sure that we've got all our values coming back from our API. So if you haven't done that, please do go and follow along on the video just before this. But on this particular video, we're gonna focus on the actual pills here. We're gonna start padding this out with the uh, the uh, with details from the API response. So if you remember, um, in our API response here, I've just sort of cut this down a little bit. We had our video uh, items within inside this context section here. But what we've also got here is this section called refinements. And as you can see here, they've got some extended terms in. So what happens in this particular API is that you carry out a search. So for example, flood or flow, and then it return you back some refinements. So you can, so it's like suggestions in some respect. And then what we're going to do in our UI is that when these refinements come back what we're going to do is we're going to actually then be able to click on these and then we're going to then refine the search results with it which is inside this list view so we're going to carry out that search again and we're going to repopulate these values and of course as you repopulate you chances are your your refinements will change as well so we're going to need to um, update those along the way so the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up some app state. So let's just choose app state here on the left hand side. We're going to create a new state variable and we're going to call this one search refinements and we're going to call this um, a JSON. Uh, which is the data type. It's going to be a list because we know that we've got one or more that's going to come back. We might not have any, but it's going to be um, a list and we're going to hit create. So once we've got that, we're going to move back over to the UI builder and we're now in a good position. So we know that we can carry out that search and then we can populate the refinements. So what we're going to do, we need, now need to make a change to our application. We need to go back over to the, uh, the widget tree and we need to make sure that we've got home page selected. As you remember here, we've got a little icon here, which action flow that's telling us that we've created um, some actions previously and of course we have done on the home page it was our API call that takes the the favorite search term that the user would have selected on the search screen and then what we're going to do is we're then going to carry out that API request we're going to pull back the data and then we're going to populate the the list view in this screen here now we're going to want to extend that now we're going to want to also take hold of the re the refinements we're going to populate the app state and then we're going to then flesh out the children with inside this row so with that, with the home page selected, we're going to choose on here the actions here. We're going to open up the action flow editor. And as you can remember, um, this is what we've done previously. This is the API result of the response that comes back from our API call. And then this is where we update the list view. We're now going to add another one on this. We're going to say add action. And here on the right hand side, we're going to say um, update app state. We're going to add the field and we're going to choose search refinements. So we're just going to then click on search refinements. We're going to go to select update data type. We're going to say set value because that's what we're doing. And then in the value source, we're going to say from variable, we're going to choose unset. And this time we're going to choose the action output. So just choose action outputs. We're going to say API results because this is the API result that we got here. So we're just going to use the same one again. And in the API response options, we're going to say JSON body. And with inside here, we're going to say JSON path. And of course, we're just going to now to put the JSON path in. So if we have a quick look at our API response here, it's just called refinements. So we're just going to do a dollar sign dot refinements just here. So dollar dot refinements and just hit confirm and hit close. That's all that we need to do at this particular stage. So now what we need to do is we now need to generate the children of our row. So let's just make sure that we've got the row selected here. This is the first one in our column. We're just going to go up to the, um, the, the children option there, generate dynamic children. And here we're just going to put a variable name in here. So as we've got refinements coming back, we are going to choose re refinement as the variable name. So with inside here, we need to give it some value. So just choose that and we're going to say app state and it's going to be the search refinements. This is what we've just created. So choose search refinements and hit confirm and then hit confirm there. One more box is going to come up. Click OK and you'll start to see now we're starting to see multiple children with inside this row. That's great. Let's just make a little change here. We're also going to want to now 
put instead of saying test pill because that's the, the static text that we had we're now going to want to put the the name of the actual refinement in there so just choose the text and then up where it says set from variable really really simply we just choose a refinement item so refinement is what that we've just set for the variable name choose refinement item and that is all we need to do we don't need to set anything else we're not looking for a specific value using a key that we've done in previous um, parts of our application we just need to just choose whatever string is in that list so if you remember back here we don't have any kind of key values here like if you look in contents for example you've kind of got like um, a height and then a value well we don't have that we're just going to quite simply just have a, a list of strings here so we don't need to do any further work in our UI we just need to hit confirm and that's all that we need to do now one thing we're just going to quickly adjust is the font size let's just just make sure our text is selected which it is just choose 12 there and I think just for good measure I think what we need to do is we need to just sort this container out here so let's let's just choose the the row there so we know where we're at and then uh, with inside that we just need to choose the container and then we're just going to pad the the right hand out say by 10 just to give it a little space there we go so you can just see now that we've got this little bit of padding in between each of these items so I think that's all that we need to do we can test this now so let's bring up the test mode here so just hit the run your app in test mode just hit that and then very very shortly we'll see the results hopefully and everything should look pretty good for us so let's just wait for that to load so excellent there we go there is a preview to what we've got in our app you can see here that we've actually got our pills now populated with data of course in our in our sample JSON that we're actually using we've actually only got three in there so but of course if you had more then you would see this be off the screen and we can then scroll this um, left and right just as we could, we're going up and down here we can do a horizontal swipe to the right and swipe to the left so that's pretty well much it for this particular section. So now we're going to now make an enhancement to this now where we're going to actually click on each of these and then we're going to see the results um, of the uh, of the API request. So now, of course, because we're using um, the JSON sample um, from a few lessons back where we wanted to kind of save ourselves a little bit with making all these multiple API calls, we didn't want to kind of um, in increase, go over our limit that we've got per month. So what we're going to do, we're going to make some changes to this now that we'll actually carry out that search again and then of course when we switch it out to our main API we're then going to be able to see the full results of that so let's pop back to our application and let's focus our attention in that area so we want to make this container um, clickable so let's just choose container because that's the what the user is going to is going to press and we're going to want to go up to our actions and we're going to want to open up our action editor so um, click on open there and we're going to want to create an action so what we need to do is we need to choose the API call option So choose API call and we're just going to go up to the group or call we're going to it's going to be the search again and that's all that we need to do don't worry this this these this kind of gets like automatically generated for us so we don't need to actually change this to anything else so under the uh, the true conditions you can see here where they were kind of moving down in this particular flow here we're at the success stage so we know that if we go in this particular path we know that we got a successful API response so let's just choose um, add there we're going to say add action and then we're going to want to then update the app state so the first piece of up state that uh, app state that we're going to update of course is our search results we're, we're carrying out this action and again in Flutterflow, we've kind of got no choice to do that and with this particular version of Flutterflow, we can't kind of put logic that we can reuse again and we, we have to make these calls every single time so it's a little bit repetitive but that's just what it is at the moment and hopefully the Flutterflow team in the future will uh, provide us the ability to call into more common kind of actions that we can use on, on more than one occasion so we, so for now we're just going to say update app state and then in the add field we're now going to want to choose our search results which is a list of JSON we want to click on search results we're going to go to update data set value we're going to click on the value from variable we're going to choose unset and we know that we're going to we want the action outputs because this is the result our API result so choose action outputs and we just want to choose the same one that we got here so we've got 89 here we just need to use 89 here. so whatever number they got generated for you just choose the one that corresponds to this so choose that one there and then we're going to say API response is the JSON body and in here we're just going to say JSON path instead of saying custom here we want to choose video because uh, that is the list of videos that we've actually got coming back and hit confirm that's that we now need to then do one more update app state 
add action and we now need to choose the update app state option here and um, this time we're going to choose our search refinements so we're just going to do just that we did before click on search refinements click on set value go to value source say from variable choose unset and we're going to want to choose the um, the uh, the uh, action outputs here we're going to choose the 89 there and in here we're just going to choose json body uh, and then here we're just going to say json path and of course we know that it's called uh, refinements there we go and hit confirm and that should be all that we need to do so hit close there okay so let's test this now let's click on the run option and here we are so we've got our application running now you won't see anything visually different though and what will happen is is that when we actually click on these you can just see as i hover the mouse over the the background changes so they definitely are clickable if i press them of course but nothing will look like it happens but don't panic at all because there is no reason for this to change because actually what's happening is, is we're just making a call into the same endpoint but i can prove that it's actually working if you just press if you're using google chrome just press f12 and you can go into what's called the developer tools and you actually would you can go up to a network so you can just choose network up the top here and then choose fetch xh uh, xhr if i actually click on each of these you can see that it is actually making a request into the 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 actual api call so that's brilliant that sets the sounds up nicely then for us to then plug this into the the proper api so that's it for this particular video this was a nice short sharp video on us fleshing out the home page of our application in the next one we're going to start building out the actual search page we're going to start to introduce an additional page in there we're going to start looking at um, putting some lotty animations in there as well to represent our kind of our loader to make it look a little bit more visually attractive to make it look like something is actually happening with inside our application and of course it'll be really really good as well um, to hook this up to our real api so I hope you found this useful. Please do like and as usual, please do subscribe to my videos if you are not currently subscribed to the channel. Um, and I look forward to producing more content as we go along. So until the next one, hope you enjoy this one and we'll see you soon.